Hello dear learners. And welcome to this series of e-learning lectures, prepared to help you develop the skills and competencies, related to the field of didactics. This is lecture number 7. The Grammar Translation Method. By the end of this lecture, learners will be able to Define the Grammar Translation Method. Identify the typical techniques the Grammar Translation Lesson. Know the advantages and shortcomings of Grammar Translation Method. But, before we move forwards, if you have not been here before, then, welcome to Univ English Channel. If you do like videos like this, then make sure to hit the subscribe button. And also smash the notification bell. To receive notifications of when I produce more videos like this. Also, let me know down the comments. What are the difficulties you are facing right now? So, I can use your ideas for future videos. Introduction The grammar translation method was the most prevalent and widely used method for language teaching between the ages of 1840 and 1940. It was originally used to teach classical languages such as Greek and Latin, which were not taught for everyday conversation. The learners were taught the grammatical rules of Latin language and the vocabulary so that they could be able to speak Latin in their first language and in their second language. But gradually, learning modern languages such as French and English was generalized to this language. Definition Grammar translation method is a method of foreign or second language teaching which makes use of translation and grammar study as the main teaching and learning activities. Richards, J. C and Schmidt, R, 2002, 231. GTM is a way of studying a language that approaches the language first thought detailed analysis of its grammar rules, followed by the application of this knowledge through the task of translating sentences and text into and out of the target language. Richard and Rogers, 2002, as cited in Bob, 2010. Foreign language learning was mainly associated with learning Latin or Greek in schools before the 20th century. At the time, little thought was given to teaching oral use of languages. Until the 20th century, it was more common for students to learn Latin or Greek in schools. Little attention was given to teach oral skills and oral language communication. In school, languages were mostly explained to be learned for learning purposes rather than to facilitate oral communication. It was not viewed as a requirement to teach oral language usage or to prepare students for becoming more proficient in reading and writing the actual language. The classical method, now known as the grammar translation method, emphasizes the learning of grammar rules and vocabulary, translation of texts, and writing exercises. Grammar translation method dominated the English language teaching field at all educational levels. This method is a way of studying a language through a detailed analysis of its grammar rules, followed by an application of this knowledge to the task of translating sentences into and out of the target language. The method was based on a prescription of the whole grammar of the language according to the criterion of what is right and what is wrong in order to enable the learners to master the general rules governing the written form of the language and to translate from and into the foreign language. Typical Grammar Translation Lesson A typical grammar translation lesson begins with a short reading usually about some place or hero from a country where the target language is commonly spoken. The reading is followed by a list of vocabulary words taken from the reading. Students must memorize all the vocabulary words. Questions are often asked about the reading, usually in written form. Following the reading sequence, there are grammar explanations to be learned. After the grammar explanation, students complete a number of exercises that present grammar points translated from one language to another. The purpose of the lesson is to develop the ability to recognize and translate between the target language and the student's primary language. During the lesson, both the teacher and students communicate in their primary language. Grammar translation lessons concentrate almost exclusively on written language. Students are assessed on grammar and vocabulary tests as well as reading passages that they are required to translate. Typical techniques of grammar translation method Translating a literary passage, translating the target language to the native language. Reading comprehension questions, 
identifying information in the proposed passage and creating inferences about one's own experience. Synonyms and antonyms, identifying words or sets of words that refer to the same things. Deductive application of rule. Fill in the blanks, filling in the gaps of a sentence with new terms or items of a particular grammar type. Memorization, memorizing vocabulary and grammar rules, and analyzing grammatical paradigms. Use words in sentences The learners must use new words in sentences to demonstrate that they can use them correctly. Composition, students write in their target language about a given topic. Advantages of grammar translation method. During the 19th century in Europe, the grammar translation method was the principal method. The aim was to learn another language so that one could read the literature in that language or benefit from the intellectual development resulting from studying that particular language. So, what are the advantages of GTM? Read literature written in the target language. Translate from one language to another. Develop reading and writing skill. Effective way for the application of grammar and sentence structure. Few. Demands on teachers. Least stressful for students. Communication between the teacher and the learners does not cause linguistic problems. Even teachers who are not fluent in English can teach English through this method. Translation is the easiest way to understand vocabulary items in a foreign language. Various other methods of understanding vocabulary items in a foreign language are even more time-consuming. A lot of time is wasted if the meanings of vocabulary items are explained through distinctions and illustrations in the foreign language. Shortcomings of Grammar Translation Method This approach has been criticized on many grounds. Wrong idea of what language is. Practical mastery of the language being learned or actual use of it was totally ignored. This method was not based on any obvious psycholinguistic or sociolinguistic theory. Accordingly, it did not concern itself with how students learn the language or how they actually use it. Its primary concern was exclusively linguistic. Less learner's motivation. The learners in that approach were completely passive. Create frustration for learners, the students left with a sense of frustration when they travel to destinations where the studied language is used, they can't understand what people say and need struggle mightily to express themselves at the most basic level it is an unnatural method. The natural sequence of learning a language is listening, speaking, reading and writing. That is the way how the child acquires his mother tongue in natural surroundings. But in the grammar translation method the instruction of the second language begins with the teaching of reading. Thus, the learning process is reversed. This creates problems. Speech is neglected. This method focuses on reading and writing, which neglects speech. As a result, the students who are taught English by this method fail to express themselves efficiently in spoken English. Exact translation is impossible. Translating in an exact way from one language to another is not always possible. A language is the result of local customs, traditions, and modes of behavior, which differ from place to place. The method is a continuous process of memorization of lists of unusable grammar rules, vocabulary and of attempts to produce perfect translations of literary extracts. Therefore, the focus is on form rather than meaning. Very often students cannot concentrate on the message as they are obliged to read word by word. There are multiple lexical items in one language, which have no synonyms slash equivalents in another language. For instance, the significance of the English term table does not fit in such expression as the table of contents, table of figures, multiplication table, timetable and table the resolution, etc. English prepositions are also hard to translate. It does not give pattern practice. One can only learn a language by internalizing its patterns to the extent that they become a habit, but grammar translation provides no such practice for the language learner. In general, it attempts to teach language through rules and not through use. Researchers in linguistics have proved that one cannot speak any language entirely by rule, neither native nor foreign. Language learning means acquiring certain skills, which can be mastered through training and not by just memorizing rules. 
The individuals who have learned a foreign or second language through this method find it difficult to give up the practice of first thinking in their mother tongue and then interpreting their thoughts into the second language. Therefore, the method fails to produce proficiency equal to that of the first language. The method thus has certain shortcomings for which no remedy exists. Despite giving definitions, rules, explanations, and exceptions in the mother tongue, the time necessary for practicing the foreign language is greatly reduced. The technique of giving definitions and rules is very boring and of little benefit to the learners. Factors that lead to the rejection of grammar translation method, increased opportunities for communication among Europeans created a demand for oral proficiency in foreign languages. Language teaching specialists also turned their attention to the way modern languages were being taught in secondary schools. New approaches to language teaching were developed by individual language teaching specialists. Conclusion Teaching requires any pedagogical method that attracts learners' attention to some particular grammatical form in such a way that it allows them to understand it metalinguistically and consciously process it so that they can use it in different manners. Though traditional grammar teaching can enhance a student's knowledge of the language, it does not allow them to apply these rules in a flexible and appropriate manner in communication. The teacher should be aware of the suitable method to positively impact the teaching learning process. Teachers must be innovative, resourceful, and ready to impart quality education.